This is Joe from Art Alien TV, and today I'm going to be showing you something that a lot of you would have already seen before, because I originally showed this about a year ago on my channel, and it's the Mars Droid, or Robot. Now, I've done a load of new clips for this Gigapan here. This, this is a new Gigapan. I've gotten rid of the old one, because the old one wasn't very good. It was over bright, and you couldn't see any real definition. I've got another one here. This is much more colourful, a bit overly colourful, this one. And uh, what we got here was the left gigapan view and the right gigapan view of this area. But this one is brighter. It's got more of a blue filter and it's actually easier to look at the details on this one. Now, for those of you that haven't seen this, bear with me. I'm going to show you some really nicely enhanced close-ups of this in a second. Here it is. And you can see this thing is not just a rock because we have this weird part going right through it here. We've got overlapping parts. We have an eye, a nose, and teeth here. Cheekbone here. I'm calling it a cheekbone, but it's not really because this isn't what you might call an actual cranium of a person, right? Even though it's shaped like one, this is a droid. Because when you enhance the contrast, like I've done here very carefully, and I've sharpened it very carefully, this took quite a lot of work initially. I did this about a year ago. So what I did with it is I enlarged it, I sharpened it quite a lot, softened it, brightened it up, darkened it, and I played around with it until I got to this level of enhancement here. Now, if you get too close to it, it's hard to focus on because when you take photographs of something at a distance and then crop them and then zoom in like what we've got here, they don't look quite right. They look a bit fuzzy. They look a bit soft. But that's because the thing is a bit of a distance away. If this was closer, of course, it'd be sharper and these details would be finer. But they're good enough to see what this thing is. And I'm still quite blown away by this. I, I kind of ignored it after I did those initial videos on it about a year, year and a half ago. Um, it didn't do very well on my channel for some reason. I think the bots on this platform probably didn't like it. Um, and I'm talking about the, the actual bots that work for the platform, not the, uh, not the trolls. And I think it, the videos were heavily squashed. And also I used the word Android. Now... If you, if you type in Android, what do you think is going to come up on on your search result? It's going to be a, a mobile phone, right? So I think maybe I got some of the wording wrong in it, and that's one of the reasons why it didn't do very well. So I'm trying to rectify that now. Now I've got here some nice clips of it, which I've redone, and I've remastered them. I've sharpened them up. I've brightened them up. I've desaturated the colour a bit because these colours go really pukey if you overdo it. When you darken these things, the, the browns get really sickly. They go sort of red, nasty kind of rusty brown color. And you've got to desaturate these images when you when you darken them. You have to darken them because if I show you down here, this is what the raw image actually looks like. Here, I'll zoom into that just there. Look, that's the raw image of it from the mass left view, right? And you can't really see anything. They're totally bleached out. I think it's because they're quite high quality. They don't really want people to see too much detail. And if you bleach the images out and make them really bright, people look at them and just dismiss them and don't bother actually enhancing them and look at them properly like we're doing today. Now, these are the original clips I did for the first video, or the second video I did of this. And I've got here one of the, the actual covers. Now, in this image, it's still too bright. But I did an over-sharpened, over-contrasted clip of it here. This one here is better. And uh, you can actually see the details pretty well in this one. Now, this is a composite of some of the images I used in previous videos, uh, previous covers that I did. This is one at the bottom here and bottom right, which was too bright. So I redid it and I did this one. That one's a bit too green. 
okay and it's still too bright I did a negative of it here you can actually see the eye detail in this one on the top right if I zoom into that look at that look at that eye there you can see the teeth in that as well and you can see these interwoven parts the mechanical parts on this what seems to be a droid of some kind there's loads of other stuff to see in this gigapan as well including what looks like a, a mummified or should i say fossilized humanoid here not a human but a humanoid there's an outline of it i mean I've, i did cover a lot of this stuff in the previous video and if you want to check that out and you're new to this channel you can with all these gigapans, I always link to the original videos like this one here. You can follow this link here. There's also links in the description here for this pan where you can link to the, uh, the original video, the newer one, and then there will be a link to this one, obviously. There's loads of stuff to see here. Now, I don't want to get bogged down in showing you everything that's on this because it would take all day, and I'm trying to keep this fairly short, okay? But there is a skull right here. And I've got a clip of that I'm going to show you in a second, just here. You can see the mouth, nose, two eyes. It's not very clear, but when you see the enhancement I've got up here, you might think differently. And this was done by Rani Bartilan, who's a great researcher, and one of the best in the world, I would say, especially due to the quality of his, his meme clips like this. This is one of his clips here. Really cool, right? Look at that. You can see the teeth, you can see the mouth. It's still not that clear, but it's pretty obvious what it is. Now, in this one here, what I've done is I've put a clip of a an android or robot next to it to give you an approximation of what it might look like if it was intact. Okay? Um, obviously, this thing is missing a jaw, lower jaw, like a mandible. So it's only the cranium. It's a human-shaped droid. Okay? I spent quite a long time looking through pictures of droids we have on Earth. Different designs. There's loads of designs going right back. In fact, it was mainly um, sci-fi artists back in the day, you know, 100 years ago or so, that started drawing these things. Putting them in comics and things like that, you know, in the 1920s, 30s, 40s. And, uh, of course, we didn't really start seeing really good droids in, in films until much later, really, like um, the Terminator movie which is just brilliant. Uh, this is from the Terminator film. This is a, a great example of a humanoid skeletal design that's been armoured and embellished with all these technical parts and, and uh, hydraulic hoses and all little motors and everything. This, this is just brilliant, okay? Awesome stuff. But I've put some other examples here just to show you what I think it might have looked like when it was intact. Now, the head is pretty similar to this thing here. Not the same, but similar. So it could have been more like this one, but we don't know what the body looked like. The body could have actually looked more like this one here. If there's a cranium of a droid here, or robot, wouldn't there be other parts of it nearby? Now, I've been having another look at this thing here. Now, this may look like a rock, but I don't think it's just a plain rock. Because if you look at it, it's got a hole in it here, and it's got this square parts on it. There's a square there, and there's these rectangular parts in here. This actually may be part of the torso, or part of the actual droid. I don't know. It may just be a rock that's, that's oddly shaped. But is it really a rock? Is it part of the actual droid? And over here, it may or may not be, I don't know. Um, over here, there's another object, which I thought was initially a rock. I did mention it in the first video, that, that actually seems to have like an arm part here. Could that be a fossilised, smashed up part of it? It looks like rock to me, I don't know. But some of this stuff doesn't look like normal rocks. We've got what look like mechanical parts that are all kind of fused together, like they're melted or something.
it's probably about 50 feet away. Now, if it was 20 feet away, this would be a different story. If it was down here, where this ridge of rocks is here, this row, right? If it was down here, we would see a lot more detail. It'd be much sharper. The question is whether you believe this is just a rock or whether you believe, like me, that this is actually part of a robot or droid that was on Mars. Now, how long it's been there, I don't know. It could have been there 100 years. It could have been there millions of years. It's probably been there thousands of years. Who knows? I just don't know. Because if this thing is made out of interesting alloys, then it wouldn't necessarily degrade. It could, it could survive on the surface for thousands of years. I've shown remains on the surface of animals and, and, and remains of people that have lasted thousands of years, and they still look quite fresh. In other words, they're frozen, crystallised and mineralised into a sort of fossil fairly effectively and preserved and can stay that way for many thousands of years until they're either covered up or eroded away eventually. But that process, I think, may take over 20,000 years to actually erode something like this down. And if this is made of, of titanium and, or some kind of alloy or something, then it could take even longer, probably 100,000 years, for it to actually erode down until it was unrecognisable. It's already eroded. That's part of the problem. And like everything else on Mars, it's covered in this kind of brownish dust, which makes these things a bit hard to recognise because everything tends to look similar because of the dust. You can see the dust layer on this thing here as well, on top, look. Everything's covered in it. And uh, occasionally that would blow off, but then get replaced again. Most of the things I'm finding are not techno fossils like this. I have shown things like tanks and aircraft, UFOs, obviously, which are technical objects. Some of the UFOs obviously are flying around, so there's still something going on on the surface. And if you look at the, the flying V drone or aircraft that I showed, whoever is on Mars now, assuming it's not us, has a high level of technical advancement, I would say. And this is a, an example of it here on the ground. And that flying V drone is an example of it in the air. And it may well have been built by the same people that built this. And that says to me that there was a highly advanced culture on Mars, which probably left Mars and came here. There are great similarities between some of the things we see on Earth and some of the things we see on Mars, like some of the buildings, some of the structures. A lot of the artwork looks similar. They have things like sphinxes that are similar to ours. Gods and goddesses that I've shown in statues are very different, but some of them look very similar to ours. The point is, what I'm trying to get across here, many of my videos contain things like statues and figurines and wrecked buildings on the ground, which look pretty primitive or old. They do look similar to a lot of the things we have in our ancient cultures. But this is different. This is a techno-fossil. This is in a different category altogether. This isn't some sort of thing you might see in ancient Egypt or ancient Greece. This is just wreckage, remnants of warfare, I would say. Now, we often have these blocks with um, buildings which are really old, like this one here, the one with the glyphs on it. I mean, that's the sort of thing you might see in ancient Egypt or ancient Greece. Very similar, right? Then we have these more modern objects on the ground like wreckage we've got this armored door which may off, be off an aircraft maybe off a bunker don't know or a vehicle it's curved a bit like the door you would get on a, a boeing 737 <laughs> it's similar to that in shape actually it's not a normal door that's for sure we have a mixture of ancient and more advanced stuff on the surface. So we've got droids, we've got remains, we've got statues which are ancient. Some of these are many thousands of years old. Some of them may be half a million years old or more.
NASA probably decided many years ago not to tell us what they found. If you're finding things like this on the ground, this droid, then you're probably not going to want to tell people on Earth about it. You're probably going to want to collect that object and study it and then send the information back or even send it back in its entirety. There's probably some very interesting chipsets in, the, in the here, I would imagine. If some of these parts on the ground that I showed you a minute ago are parts of this droid, then there might be a power source inside one of these things, which could be nuclear powered or, or some kind of other type of power. We just don't know. Something like this would, on, on the surface of Mars would have to be a bit like the Perseverance rover, nuclear powered or some kind of similar technology to keep it operating for long periods of time. On a droid like this, it, it wouldn't be any good just having solar power or battery power. You'd have to have some significant and pretty advanced power source to run something like this. Okay, So some of these things we're seeing on the ground in this area may be like this here, may actually have something inside them, like a power source. And uh, let's see if this video would do better than those before. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.